The birth date of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was January 15, 1929, and that date became a holiday in some American cities and states in the years after he was assassinated. But when legislation was signed in 1983, making Martin Luther King Jr. Day a federal holiday, it was scheduled to be observed on the third Monday in January, and it's been that way since the first national observance in 1986. Though federal employees and many other Americans don't have to work on Martin Luther King Day, the U.S. government recognizes this as a day of service, a day on, not a day off, with the goal of encouraging Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. It's usually marked by speeches, marches, and other events attended by civil rights leaders and U.S. political figures. Dr. King, an American Baptist minister, felt that peaceful events like marches were the best way to achieve civil rights for African Americans. He founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957. He led the March on Washington in 1963, where he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. And he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize the next year. The man who in 1963 famously said that segregation and discrimination had kept black Americans from being free was himself awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom nine years after his assassination in 1968. And in honor of his civil rights accomplishments, we have a special feature on Martin Luther King starting right now. CNN 10 is collaborating with the AT&T Youth Voices Collective to help amplify youth voices. So today, in commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we'd like to welcome the students of the Harvard Diversity Project to share portions of some of Dr. King's most famous and influential speeches. The Harvard Diversity Project, based in Dr. King's own hometown of Atlanta, is a pipeline program that recruits, trains, and matriculates highly motivated black youth into a summer debate residency at Harvard. Let's hear from the students. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot look back. There are those who are asking the devil to use civil rights. When will we be satisfied? No, 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 we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. How long will it take? Somebody's asking. How long will prejudice blind the vision of men? However difficult the moment, however frustrating the hour, it will not be long because truth crushed to earth will rise again. How long? Not long, because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has trembled out the benches where the grapes were at the store. He is losing the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Somewhere, we must come to realize that human progress never rolls in on the wheel of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of dedicated individuals who are willing to be co-workers, with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagnation. And so, we must always help time and realize that the time is always right to do right. We mean business now, and we're determined to gain our rightful place in God's world. And that's all this whole thing is about. We aren't engaged in any negative protests or any negative arguments with anybody. We are saying we're determined to be men. We're determined to be people. We are saying, we are saying we are God's children and that we are God's children. We don't have to live like we are forced to live. Let us rise up tonight with the greater readiness. Let us stand with the greater determination. And let us move on in these powerful days, these days of challenge to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. 
I have a dream that one day Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.